tonight on 16 by 9. Troubled waters. We're probably one of the most backwards countries in terms of treating our water. Right now, how often is raw human waste ending up in the river? Well, every time that there's a major rainfall. A cracked and crumbling system that's going to cost billions to fix. And a murder unsolved. A person of interest was identified in 1975. A trail going cold. It's about keeping the file alive. And a mother's grief. Every single day of my life, I hear my heart break. And then... Yeah, I know. I see more of that thing. Shot right. Real tears. Real joy. The story of the real glee. Here's Carolyn Jarvis. Good evening and welcome to 16 by 9. Fresh water is one of Canada's most precious resources. We're a country of a million lakes. But some say our cities are squandering that resource, and it's more than old pipes leaking under our feet. Canada has just passed regulations for wastewater treatment that the U.S. passed 40 years ago. And it could take decades and billions of dollars for us to catch up. For a close-up look at our water crisis, we sent Jackson Prosco on a cross-country tour. Every day in Vancouver, at 8 o'clock in the morning, a second pump starts up at the Lions Gate water treatment plant, getting ready for 90 million litres of wastewater from the city. As showers turn on and toilets flush. Essentially what I'm seeing in here is what's going to end up back in the ocean. That's Sandy McKenzie, superintendent at Lions Gate. And this is my first stop on a cross-country journey to discover just how much of what we flush down our drains ends up in rivers, lakes and oceans and ends up coming back through our kitchen taps. You wouldn't want to drink it. It's called primary treatment. Basically, that means it cleans out solid pieces or what I learned on this trip to delicately call floatables. This is all really the most basic level of treatment you can do. But anything liquid that goes down a drain, detergent, spoiled milk, human waste, well, that doesn't get cleaned out. Now Vancouver and hundreds of other cities in Canada have to upgrade. A new Canadian law says primary treatment plants like Lionsgate don't cut it anymore. Now cities have to remove bacteria and most of the other nasty things dissolved in our wastewater. I'm sure it doesn't make you happy knowing that that's what's ending up back in the ocean. No, exactly. We need to do a better job of treating this water. It's the ocean that's let Vancouver get away with an old-fashioned method of water treatment for so long. As North Vancouver Mayor Daryl Masato told me, the catchphrase used to be, dilution is the solution to pollution. Dumping into the ocean, you get more of a dilution effect, so it wasn't as high a priority. You're still dumping it somewhere. It's going somewhere, and we've got to do a better job of treating that water before it gets somewhere. No doubt about that. Across the country, next to one of the largest freshwater lakes in the world, Mark Matson runs the Lake Ontario Waterkeeper, tracking Canada's messy patchwork of water regulations. When it comes to what's being dumped in our rivers, lakes, and oceans right now, what's the most alarming practice you see in this country? Stormwater and sewage. Municipalities have to come to grips with the fact that they are, just like everyone else, they have obligations to meet our environmental laws or they're going to be a big part of the problem. And so we have to have minimum standards that apply to people, to industry and to government. And no one should get a free pass. Have municipalities been let off the hook here? I would say yes. This new standard that is required of Canadian municipalities is one that the U.S. has had for almost 40 years. Yes, it is, and it's long due in Canada. We're probably one of the most backwards countries in terms of treating our water. The fix isn't cheap. To meet new standards, Vancouver has to upgrade two of its five treatment plants at a staggering cost of $1.5 billion. The upgrades aren't coming anytime soon. Cities across Canada have been given until 2040, but as I found out, they don't have the cash to do it now anyway. If we had to take it on all ourselves, it would be 
almost impossible. Our tax rates would increase so significantly that, that the, I'm sure that the taxpayers would rebel. So that's why we need the provincial and federal governments to step up and, and, and help us with this. On an April day that didn't feel much like spring, I arrived in Regina to talk with Sandy Bailey, the manager of water and sewer engineering. I discovered this city has a different kind of water issue. We have asbestos cement pipes in our uh, distribution system. How many kilometers of this asbestos pipe are there in Regina? We have approximately 550 kilometers of asbestos cement pipe, and that represents about 55% of our system. Is there asbestos in Regina's water? No. We don't test for asbestos in our water. The whole idea was that the concrete pipe would have a much longer lifespan than this. That's Roy Cullimore. He's a microbiologist, but you could call him the sewage doctor. He showed me what happens to a steel pipe that's in the ground for many years. Now this is called microbially influenced corrosion. Regina put metal pipes like this one in the ground as far back as the 1940s. The mild steel pipe had a tremendous problem in that the bacteria were ripping out the steel. To combat that problem, Regina needed to come up with a better, longer-lasting material for its water pipes. Seventy years ago, asbestos-lined concrete seemed like a great solution. The concrete would not corrode and therefore would not be subject to this type of activity. So that's why they thought asbestos was the right material. Yes. Health Canada has uh, deemed it to be a not a concern when it's ingested. So they, have, they don't see any reason to set maximum acceptable concentration. So in the absence of any guidance from Health Canada, you have no reason to test for asbestos beyond what the province says? That's correct. Yes. And right now there's no testing done? That's correct. The thinking goes that asbestos is only dangerous when it's airborne, not trapped in a pipe full of water. But those pipes are now aged and cracking, and when the city pulls them up, the problems begin. If you take the pipe out of the ground, obviously you're taking out all of the asbestos that is in that pipe. Now the question is, what do you do with it when you've taken it out of the ground? So you're going to have to go to the hazardous landfill site, out of sight, out of mind. Right now, how often is raw human waste ending up in the river or in the lake? Well, every time that there's a, there's a major uh, rainfall. Toronto has a secret. The city of shiny new high-rises has something crumbling beneath its streets. These are Toronto storm sewers. Some of them are 100 years old, built back when the car was still a new invention. Toronto's Director of Water Infrastructure Management, Michael D'Andrea, explained to me how the old sewers work. A single pipe, we carry both sewage as well as stormwater runoff when it rains. And all of it, raw sewage and stormwater, ends up in the same place Toronto gets its drinking water, Lake Ontario. How much sewage is ending up in Lake Ontario? It's hard to calculate it. I mean, here in Toronto, they talk billions of litres a year are discharged. We have this dubious distinction of being one of 43 polluted areas of concern in the Great Lakes Basin, largely related to the pollution generated from our combined sewer overflows. But new standards don't apply to these old sewers. That sounds like a loophole to me. Well, it is a loophole. Water that leaves here, Toronto's R.C. Harris treatment plant, goes through three levels of purification. As much as 700 million litres of clean water is pumped out to homes in Toronto every day. The problem is, not all of it gets there. The total losses from our system has been estimated to be about 8% per year. And if you want to know what that looks like, Toronto loses enough drinking water to fill 38 Olympic swimming pools every day. How much could you make by selling that water if you weren't losing it? We estimated that to be a value of about $30 million. That lost water and revenue can be blamed mostly on aging, eroding and cracking water mains. Largely as a result of perforations in that metallic pipe as it over time it rusts and we have perforations, sometimes pinhole leaks. The cost just to fix the leaky pipes and clean up the waterfront is a staggering three billion dollars. Is there any help on the horizon from the federal budget for example? Well we don't know for certain. Hi, Jackson Prosco. James Arnott. Just how many sewage treatment plants in this country need to be upgraded? There's about a thousand. Is there a cost estimate on all that? About six billion dollars. I'm in Ottawa talking to James Arnott. He's with Environment Canada's Wastewater Division. I asked him what the federal government is going to do to help municipalities with the six billion dollars it's going to cost to fix all our wastewater problems. 
Infrastructure Canada um, has made recent announcements in terms of new, new funding arrangements. I don't know of many mayors though who want to cut the ribbon on a sewage pipe versus say a new subway line. Wastewater um, compared to other higher profile infrastructure projects um, do sometimes take a back seat. It's 2013 and there are still places in this country that don't treat their sewage. That doesn't seem very first world. No, it, it's a crisis, it's an embarrassment, and we need to get on and fix it. That's me overlooking a field of, well, human waste. Today I'm in Halifax with the Director of Wastewater Services, Sushel Aurora. He's taking me on an unusual tour to look at a site where one of the city's decaying wastewater pipes burst, spewing a brown smelly muck an inch thick. So you were saying this pipe is meant to last up to 70 years? Yes, it's, it's, it's failed after 30. Yeah, it's, it's failed after 30. Still, Halifax has a lot to be proud of. This new sewage treatment plant built just five years ago for the cost of $54 million removes 90% of the bacteria in the water. But now the folks in Ottawa are saying this just isn't good enough. Even though Halifax is just a hair shy of the new federal standard, it needs to dish out millions more to comply with the new law. I think for all the three plants is about 200 million or 300 million, something like that. It's a big number. 300 million dollars. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's a big number. A big number that the city says will result in no noticeable improvement in water quality in Halifax's harbor. They'd rather spend the money fixing up those fragile pipes underground. For waterkeeper Mark Matson, the cost of doing nothing outweighs the six billion dollars needed to clean up Canada's troubled waters. How did we get here? We took off the privilege of all the water and fresh water we have in Canada for granted. We didn't invest in protecting it. Next, a mother's fight. I'm not gonna give up the fight. No. To solve her daughter's murder.